Hi, my name is Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we are going to be cutting out the Sea Jewel Tote. It's so big, it barely fits in the camera frame. Um, it's amazing. It's beautiful. So this is what it will be looking like. We're going to cut it all out together. And then in the next video, we will sew it. So let's get going. Okay, so I have my materials chosen. Um, this is a faux leather, so vinyl from M line bags. It's um, the, from their Mora line. It's like that olive color or something like that. Um, and then I have this canvas, which is from blended threads for my lining. And then I'm going to use this SF101 equivalent. Um, I believe I'm going to also need some like fusible fleece, maybe Decoville heavy for the base. I haven't haven't checked quite yet. I think I do need firm interfacing. So yeah, I'll use a Decoville heavy on the base. Um, and then minimal hardware. I'm not sure if I want to put purse feet on yet or not, but uh, two magnetic snaps. And I may decide that I want to put a zipper pocket in at some point just to turn the bag through. But um, I'm not sure. If I do, then I'll need a zipper and a pull. So I'm going to put these to the side. Okay, so I'm going to just put the lining pieces to the side for a minute. These are pretty big pieces, but um, we are making the tote version here. I think it's going to be beautiful. I'm, I'm really excited. Oh, wait, I think I need four. Let me grab two more. I think I might need four just based on this. But I haven't, to be honest, I haven't read the pattern yet either. So, you know, there's that. I'm also going to grab a logo tag. And a washer to back it. Okay. Now I'm going to put my lining pieces to the side and I'll start with my exterior. Okay, so when you're choosing your vinyl, I would, based on what I'm reading, I would go with something that's a little, got a little bit of drape to it, nothing too thick. I think she says less than a millimeter is recommended. Really quick, I'm just going to cut the salvage off. I even just changed my blade. Let's do the main piece first. Oh, beautiful. I think this is an 18 inch piece of material. It is. Oh, look at that. It fits on this perfectly. I wonder if this one does. Oh, that would have been too easy. That's okay. Though. So this piece fits on here perfect. We are going to be cutting four of these, um, two this way, and then we're going to flip it over and do two more mirrored. So I'm going to grab some pattern weights. And get this traced out. I should have printed this on cardstock. I absolutely despise tracing patterns when they are on just regular paper. It's a pain in the butt to me. But I had run out of cardstock and I really wanted to do this timely. So here we are. It might be easier if I trace from the front with a metallic pen because it's a nice smooth surface. I'm gonna try tracing from the front. So we did that once, we're gonna do that three more times. Trying to waste as little as possible, especially since these pieces are pretty big. I do have multiple rolls, I think though, so we'll see. Yeah, lots easier from the front on the nice smooth line also. And I just move my pattern weights kind of close to the edge as I go. Hopefully this comes off. That's the only downfall to writing on the front side with the silver marking pen is then it ends up everywhere. At least for me. Does it happen to you? Comment down below if you're in that boat too. So we have two pieces and then we're going to do two more mirrored pieces. So 
those were with that face down so we'll do two with the piece face up again trying to keep waist to a minimum Probably wipe it off with a baby wipe. Um, I only use water wipes now for the most part. I had a regular baby baby wipe take off the finish of a really beautiful vinyl a while back, so I've been real careful what I do and don't use. So when we put it together, these are gonna be how you do them. So you'll sew these together, right sides together. And it's gonna be just beautiful. I think I'm gonna need a second roll, which is okay. I'm not gonna cut this piece just yet, but since it'll fit there, I'm just gonna hold it and trace it this way instead of turning it around. So I have my four pieces of exterior panel A vinyl. I am going to cut some SF101 equivalent, um, but not right this moment. I usually just rough cut that, fuse it, and then trim it down. So put these to the side. Might as well cut this one while I'm here, and then I'll cut one more and move this over to the lining panel. Uh, lining pile, sorry. Oh yeah, definitely going to need a second roll. So this is not a one roll pattern. Um, if you are doing the tote version, I bet it probably is if you're doing just the regular handbag version though. That one I, I believe is significantly smaller. Right, I'm going to put these in my container, but then I'm also going to move this piece over because I do need a lining panel for it. I think I have enough to flip. Oof, barely. That works. Okay. Let me cut this real quick and then we'll do the other piece. Even though I have this tiny little piece that's going to be missing from the corner, um, I'm pretty sure that the seam allowance is 3 eighths. I think that's what she usually uses. So even if it was quarter inch though, it'll be within the seam allowance, so not a big deal. And then that's gonna go in the lining pile too, because I got a couple lining pieces of that one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Now my hands are covered in silver marking pen. It's fine. Everything's fine. This is, I, and this does have the measuring cup measurements here. So, but I just, I covered them up for the purposes of this video. I'm going to try and get one, two of these out of here. I can't get two of these. Yeah, yeah. Sure, it would have been like less wasteful to have done those rectangle pieces, but whatever. A minute now. All right, these last couple of pieces, I'm gonna cut real quick. I almost thought I didn't have another roll of green and had a moment of panic, but I did find one. It's my last one. So I'm cutting the small handle that goes at the top right now. And it's a two-part handle. I love how she does her handles. I think they're really, really pretty and classy. So if you haven't given her handle um, style a try, you definitely should. All right, before I go putting an interfacing on anything here, I'm going to mark out the centers on my base. I'm going to draw the center lines too. I found it's helpful ish sometimes. Just don't press too hard if your vinyl is really soft. You don't want to leave an indent that you can see on the front. This will just help me line up my um, Decoville Heavy and whatever interfacing and stuff I use. I'm not sure yet. And it's not directional, but it but it is all at the same time. So this is an error erasing marking fabric pen. So I'm gonna trace a piece, cut a piece, trace a piece, cut a piece. But I do feel like it draws better on fabric than just a regular pen. Hopefully my pen hasn't disappeared by the time I'm tracing this giant piece. I don't know how people that make clothing do it because their pieces are huge. And while we're here, I really appreciate the full pattern piece, not the fold and cut. Like cut on fold. Not, oh, those are hard for me. I really struggle with those. I don't know why. I shouldn't. But I do. I'm not the best with a rotary cutter without a roller. I'm liable to lose a finger or something. The only thing that would be funnier than me losing the finger would be me losing the finger on camera. Just kidding, they're really not that sharp. And I haven't decided if I'm going to put Decoville, or not Decoville, um, like an SF-101 equivalent on the lining or if I'm going to just leave it as is. So here's my second lining piece. I didn't trace it all, but I traced the important parts because it's just a straight line. This is really wide. So I'm going to make sure if I do this, I can... It's 
I'm trying to use some of this down here. Two more pieces. Oh my God, I need four of these. It's gonna be a problem. Right, Y'all were probably giggling at me as I was like, "Yeah, I can get this out of one." No, Ashley, you can't. This is why you read the instructions before you make the pattern. There's one. I'm gonna do two for now. Then I'm gonna look and see. Maybe I have a salad that I could use for like the inside portion of the slip pocket because you're not gonna see it anyways. Just marking my centers out. All right, I'm gonna take my piece and punch out my whole holes with the punch. I'm not gonna make these holes on my piece. I'm just going to take my pen and mark the spots. All right, so I have no idea how I'm going to transfer this teeny tiny little triangle. I have a spine tip sharpie. Hopefully that transfers. That pleat is what I'm not sure of. I, mean, I, I gotta see. I think I cut it out. Yeah, I must. Okay. If not, it's tiny and within the seam allowance. So, but I know we do some stitching based on these notches. So it looks, looks like it says you fold this one in half. I think I decided I am going to put Decoville, or geez, not Decoville. I'm so used to using Decoville. I think I am going to put like an SF 101 on the backing of my lining and the vinyl. I wasn't sure about the lining because it is a canvas, but my machine will eat it if I don't. And then I get really annoyed. Um, might as well just skip that whole song and dance. I never cut my SF 101 exact. It's a pain in the butt in my opinion. I overcut it and then fuse it, call it a day. I just don't want to like overcut too much because then I end up with glue on my heat press bed. Mm. So just keep that in mind. I mean, I have a Teflon sheet, so every now and then I have to change it out. But like, I'm not gonna leave this whole center thing there. That'd be crazy town. And I'll trim it down later. Let's fuse it. So exactly what I just did, I'm gonna do for all of my exterior pieces and my lining pieces, and then we'll fuse. So I'll be back. Okay, so I have cut everything out and fused um, an SF-101 on the back of every piece I cut out because this is 
Mora vinyl from Emmeline and it has some stretch to it. So I wanted to make sure that it doesn't stretch on me, um, especially for the handles. So I do need to redraw my centers on the handle pieces. So I'm gonna do that and place some double-sided tape on it. And then we're just gonna prepare all of our pieces real quick before we go over to the sewing machine. So I'm gonna place some double-sided tape right down that line. Um, this double-sided tape, I do get this from Weft and Warp Co. Um, it is my all-time favorite double-sided tape. Not only does it stick really well, but you can tear it, which is just amazing. So I'll link that down below, um, but it's from the shop Weft and Warp Co. And if her shop is closed and or out of stock, there are times where it's also for sale on Lauren's site, so mormino.com. Okay. So these are ready to go. What we'll do is we'll fold them each into the center line um, once we get over the machine and are ready to sew. I did hang on to these scraps of um, fusible fleece just to put behind the snaps that we're going to be installing. So the rest of these pieces um, don't really need any prep work. So I've got both of my handle cuffs, so the lining and the exterior ones. I've got my side panels, so my exteriors have my SF-101 on them. And my lining had SF-101 as well as a piece of fusible fleece. Um, the instructions were that this goes on the lining. I almost put it on the exterior, didn't read the instructions. Not sure it would have made a huge difference, but, you know, try and do it right. Um, I have my base pieces here, so I have my exterior, um, has some SF-101 on it, and then a piece of Decoville Heavy. I've also marked out my placement for my purse feet, so I'll go ahead and put those on now. I need a washer. Oh, these are my rivets. Okay, let's go ahead and install our purse feet. So I already marked out the spot. So we have the placement for them. And then what I'm gonna do is I will center this washer over that mark and trace that on the Decoville. Okay. Once you have your markings, I'm going to grab a craft knife, seam ripper, however you want to do it, and very carefully I'm going to cut these lines. Don't overdo them, otherwise your purse feet prongs will go right through them and that won't be good. You want the smallest slit possible. So then you just open these up. And from the right side, you pop them through. Place the washers. And there you go. So I'll do that for all the other five. These aren't my favorite kind of purse feet, but these were all I had in this finish. So you may do. Okay, so my base, exterior, and lining, those are both ready to go. I have my exterior pieces. So there's two and then two mirrored. Um, and I did mark out these Darts here, we'll work on those two once we get over at the sewing machine. And then I have two of these accents and two of these um, lining main panels. So I did apply some double-sided tape to the back 
and we will be placing these on top like this and then top stitching around the raw edge. Um, at that point, then we will install the snaps. So I have the template for the snaps somewhere. I don't want to install the snaps just yet because I don't want them to interfere with my top stitching. I want to know my foot can get around it nice. So this is how it'll look once it's all stuck on. So we'll go ahead and stick the other one on real quick just to get everything ready. Stuff is pretty sticky. but it's also able to be repositioned, so it's not a big deal. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's go ahead and line this up. Silver marking pen everywhere. Okay, so then when we get to the machine, we're gonna top stitch it an eighth of an inch around. Um, you could do the whole thing, but pay attention to this. I'm also going to draw out the pivot dot on the template, but I won't do that until we get to the machine to sew. So these are both of my main lining panels. And then I ended up going with a solid um, Lux Light nylon from Wonderground for the inside of my pocket pieces and the pretty stuff for the outside. So um, we'll be sewing these right sides together. I'm really not even sure which side is the right side or the wrong side of this, but you'll be sewing along the curve and then down the bottom, making the tube, we'll turn it out and all that good jazz. So I overcut these gray pieces. I didn't need to cut it exact. I can just trim it down. So that's both of these. And that is everything you need along with the four magnetic snaps that I have in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this over to our machine and we'll start sewing.